Hi, good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> uh, it's the last uh, topic in uh, this uh, conference. I hope everyone has, has enjoyed it. In a uh, three weeks ago, my friends asked me how to perform NTLM refreshing attack. So today we are here. Uh, okay, let's uh, get started. We have many discoveries to share with you. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, first, of all, first of all, let me introduce our team. My name is Yung Tao Wa. It, it, it work for, <laughs> I work for Qihu, uh, specialized in Peng Tai Sai, where I, where I, <laughs> uh, I am a speaker and a black hand code blue poker. Yong Tao Wang is our team member. He works for Qi Hu. Uh, my name is Yang Zhang, uh, as known as Easy. Uh, I'm from China, uh, from Back to Zero Chinese second team. Uh, I am an independent security researcher. Uh, I work for Alibaba, uh, but now maybe more work for the world. Uh, I like the process of hacking, especially like RCE. Okay, uh, TLDR, okay. Uh, in this uh, presentation, uh, we will quickly review the history of NTLM uh, refreshing attack, including SMB to SMB refreshing attack, and uh, HTTP to SMB refreshing attack, and uh, how Microsoft uh, fixed them. After that, we will talk about how we bypass uh, Microsoft patch and uh, perform NTLM uh, refreshing attack successfully. Uh, when it comes to the HTTP to SMB refreshing attack, we will discuss hot potato uh, privilege escalation and you introduce a new technology to perform NTLM refreshing attack. And finally, we will talk about a new attack surface in SSF. According to it, we have discovered several uh, critical security issues in Java. Uh, combine this vulnerability, we will discuss the far-reaching effects of NTLM refreshing attack. Uh, quickly review the history of uh, NTLM attack in about 10 minutes. NTLM Manager is a suite of NTLM security protocols used for remote authentication, such as logging into remote SMB servers. Also, NTLM is a challenging response authentication machine. Uh, NTLM authentication is supported by Windows, including V1, V2, and the session version. The difference between uh, the three variation is tiny. We will discuss the difference between V1 and V2. Also, NTLM authentication integrated by other protocols, such as HTTP, SMB, LDAP. OK, you just uh, need to know NTLM protocol is used for remote authentication. So let's take a look at the NTLM authentication process. There are three steps, which including NTLM type one, type two, type three message. When the client requests the server, uh, it will send an NTLM type one message to the server, including support options and the domain name and other information. Uh, when the server received the type one message, it will generate a challenge and send it to the client. The client received the type two message. It will use it to uh, as a key to encrypt the local NTLM hash. The result of the encrypted hash will send to the server for authentication. After the server received the, the result of the hash encrypted, uh, it will use the same method to generate the a result and compare 
complete it uh, with the results sent by the client. If the two results are the same, the authentication is successfully. That's the, that's the entire process of NTLM v1 authentication, but there are some security issues. We can, we can find that the client can't determine whether the server is a, is a legitimate server and we can perform pre-compute attack. When the client connects to the manager server, the, the server can send a fixed challenge to the client and generate a rainbow, rainbow table for the fixed challenge. It only, it only takes a few seconds to crack the hash. So Microsoft made some change in V2 version for, for the patch. In NTLM V2 type 3, type 3 message, the client will also generate a rundown challenge. Use it together with the server challenge to encrypt the NTLM hash. So, so uh, the attacker can't predict the client's challenge. It can prevent the pre-compute attacks. Clients Client challenge is the biggest uh, difference between V2 and V1. So NTL V2 is more secure than NTL MV1. Uh, the SMB2 SMB refreshing attack is a representative attack in the history of NTL M refreshing attack. Relay the SMB NTL M hash to the same server and the local machine must authenticate itself successfully, finally lead to the remote command execution. There is a typical attack scene of NTLM, the flashing attack, where a user uh, browse an attacker's website with the file scheme in HTML. Browser will, will send an NTLM hash to attacker automatically. The attacker can relay the NTLM to hash it to the victim. And finally, lead to the RCE. So Microsoft released a patch named the MS08068 for this vulnerability, which will maintain a challenge table the issued challenge will put in it and can't identify to local machine. Finally, it can stop the stop relay the net NTLM hash to the same machine. However, we can find that challenge table can't share with other servers. So we can we can relate to another servers and game remote remote command execution. And the Microsoft just fixed fix the refreshing attack uh, on SMB to SMB refreshing attack. We can perform uh, cross -port protocols refreshing attack, such as HTTP to SMB refreshing attack. When we're talking about HTTP to SMB refreshing attack, we have to mention hot potato privilege escalation. Hot potato combines three vulnerabilities to perform local privilege escalation. One for HTTP to SMB refreshing attack, the others for WPAD, but in the middle attack. Uh, hot potatoes and tech method is perfect, using six steps to perform local privilege escalation. It it looks confused, so we use some flow charts to explain the main attack process. First, we hijacked the WPAD request by NetBIOS spoofing. WPAD is an automatical 
uh, proxy discover servers. If we hijack WPAD successful, or, or HTTP traffic will send it to us. No, or local HTTP traffic will go through our proxy server. There is a defender, Windows Defender uh, servers on Windows 7, which will request Microsoft's update URL. And uh, then we uh, send the 401 HTTP response to the Windows Defender client. It will send the NetNTLN hash with the system account via HTTP protocol automatically. And the way relay the relay it with the system account to the local SMB servers. Finally, need to privilege escalation from a low privilege account to system account. It's cool. So Microsoft released two patches to fix it. Uh, MS sixteen zero seven five is for the HTTP to SMB refreshing attack, and uh, the MS-16077 is for the WPAD when in the middle attacks. WPAD will, use, uh, will not use NetBIOS and uh, doesn't send the NetNTLM hash. So <laughs> Microsoft fixed the HTTP to SMB refreshing attack vulnerability, but there are some security issues in this patch. Next, we, <laughs> let's take a journey to bypass Microsoft patch and achieve the goal of remote command execution. At first, we perform a re refreshing attack on Windows 7 with the patch uninstalled and we release the NetNTLM hash to the local SMB servers. The server return states success is called to us, so we can perform NTLM refreshing successfully. And then we perform refreshing attack on Windows Server with the patch installed. SMB servers returns access daily to us. We can see in this screenshot what happened during the authentication process. We analyze it. We analyze it all the traffic generated during the attack, but found nothing. All packs, all packs are normal. We start reading many relevant documents and conduct an in deep the in analysis of NTLM protocol and discover an interesting thing. We found that there are some flags, message flags, in NTLM authentication. The document states that, that this flag will have some more things in the NTLM authentication process. And some flags are security related. We are very interested in these flags. So we write a, write a tools to find this message, message flags and uh, go to amazing discover. In the preview, preview failed attack, the NTLM authentication user was new in type two message, type two message. Do you remember? It's a system account, but fixed by Microsoft patch. We can't use it to to authenticate, but now we received a um, normal user administrator. You can see from the screenshot, it's a crash or discover. We compared the traffic and found um, found that the negotiate local call flag modified by in the type two message. What is the negotiate local call flag used for? The server remind the user 
by setting this flag. The client and the server are on the same machine. Does the flag affect affects the Microsoft patch? So we <laughs> take the take the question and conduct an attack test. Let's watch a video clip. At the first, the we will run a tools named the uh, M packet. It used for relay the NTL Mahashi to uh, target the SMB servers. And then we start Metasploit and uh, listen on um, port 444. Finally, we send an HTTP request from Windows to the M packet. When the uh, M packet received the HTTP request, it will send the 401 HTTP response to the Windows. And the Windows will send the NTLM hash to M packet automatically. And the M packet received the NTLM hash, it will relate to uh, Windows SMB servers. If <laughs> if the NTLM re refresh attack is successfully, we will game the uh, shell on Windows. Uh, the local local core flag is the key, and the M packet is uh, we have modified. The sort code we have modified, and we will release it on GitHub in few few ways. When we successfully perform the NTL, uh, HTTP two SMB refreshing attack, we have to talk about hot potato. Let's take a look at the patch of hot potato first. It uh, fixed the HTTP to SMB refreshing attack, and then and which has which ha has been bypassed by us. The second is the Windows Defender update client will send a hash to send a hash that can use for authenticating. The Microsoft uh, uh, release two patches for for uh, this uh, vulnerability. So Microsoft has has fixed the NTLM the authentication for system account credential. After repeat test, we found a new vector, new attack vector. Uh, the URL points to Microsoft help help document when the Windows Defender is abnormal. It will send an HTTP request to Microsoft document website. If we hijack this HTTP request and send 401 response response back, it will send an NTLM hash to us automatically, which can use for authenticating, and we can perform NTLM refreshing attack. So we modified hot potato source code, change the val value of uh, Local core flag, and the uh, and the perform an um, WPAD main in the middle attack, as you can see from this uh, screenshot. On um, when on the server with Microsoft uh, patch installed, we successfully perform an uh, HTTP to SMB refreshing attack and uh, write a file on uh, C disk root directory. So we can be sure that uh, the patch fix is in completely. In addition, we can, I think we can find more attack vector, like Windows document request. However, the 
in the patch of a hot potato, there is another patch, MS-16077. It uh, fixes the hijacking uh, WPAD by NetBIOS spoof. Therefore, on the server with patch installed, we can perform um, WPAD main and middle attack. So WPAD main and middle attack is dead. But uh, is that over? Uh, there are two named main and middle things. It can abuse the default IPv6 configuration in a Windows network. Acting as a manager's DNS server and uh, redirect traffic to us. For more detail, please see the article Compromising IPv4 Network while IPv6. So, WPAD made the middle attack reverse. Now we have bypass our patch of hot potato. We combine three vulnerabilities to perform privilege escalation. The first step, we abuse IPv6 on Windows network to hijack WPAD and we redirect uh, Microsoft help document request to us. Then we will get an NTLM authentication hash and relate to uh, SMB servers. Finally, we can execute arbitrary comments with a high privilege user. Uh, inc incidentally, uh, before perform NTLM relay attack, main in the middle attack is required, such as po poison DNS, spoof NetBIOS, or LLMNR. We, when we implement main in the middle attack, we have no choice without waiting until there is a NetNTLM hash sent to us. In addition, we always relay the NetNTLM hash to SMB servers, which is very strict. So we need to change we need to change current attack methods. Let's explore some new ways to perform NTLM refreshing attack. Next, we will discuss a um, new attack SSF attack uh, suffers that can ignore most of uh, SSF defense and uh, directly lead to remote command execution while once deployed. We combine this new attack surface with NTLM refreshing attack and uh, pro propose a new attack method. Let's take Let's take a look at uh, typical SSF attack. When we found an SSF vulnerability, we should try to bypass the SSF defense and uh, scan the internet uh, environment and uh, compromise the internet uh, servers. It's time, there is, these steps are time consuming and may not successfully. But uh, luckily, we found a new attack suffers. We can attack the connector, network connector. If there is a um, HTTP client, we can attack this HTTP client. If there are um, database client, we can attack this database client. When these network connectors request our internet or public servers, we send the payload back, may directly lead to remote command execution. This attack method sounds very novel, but uh, in fact, we have found many real world vulnerabilities that can directly, directly lead to RCE. Uh, so this new attack surface, we have achieved the flow in three break source in SSF attack. First, we don't need to scan the internet 
just need just need that the client can connect to our public servers. Most uh, company prevent access of attack by the strict internet access. So we companies ignore, ignore most of access of defense by attack network connector. Second, we don't need to scan the don't need to scan internet servers. We just need to send our payload to the client and gain remote command execution. Maybe someone think it's incredible. In real world attacks scene, we found many RCE, in RCE such as database clients. If the client connects to us, we can directly uh, lead to RCE. It's, it's beyond the scope of our discussion today. Uh, but uh, we, we, after uh, a few weeks, we will choose that date to discuss. Third, in the past, uh, many SSF vulnerabilities have, have been considered in low compact. But according to it, this new attack surface, we found the we found that part of them can directly lead to RCE. So uh, according to this uh, new attack surface, we also found a critical vulnerability in Java. If you are familiar with Java, then you must know the URL connection class. It's a basic class in Java. Most of the Java function use it to request the HTTP combine the new attack surface we just mentioned. Uh, we conducted an in-depth study of URL connection. From the core graphy of Java URL connection, we can find that it supports NTLM and caching. Finally, by calling JNI function to invoke a Windows API. In security context, which is a function to get Windows credential, it's great for that we want. If the URL connection can perform NTLM authentication automatically, then we can achieve the goal of RCE by relay the NTLM hash to local SMB servers. Uh, we found that the default behavior of URL connection doesn't judge the URL, but always returns true. It means that the HTTP request sent by Java will send the NetNTLA HFC automatically. We can relay it to SMB servers and uh, directly lead to remote command execution. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the entire attack process. First, uh, we use the SSF vulnerability to let the server send an HTTP request to us. And we send the 401 HTTP re response to the server. The server will send the NTLM hash NTLM hash it to us automatically. Finally, we relay the NTLM hash to the SMB servers, which, which will need to remote command execution. We no longer need to perform in the middle attack. And uh, we can watch a video demo. We run a Java application on Windows. And we will 
found um, SSF vulnerability. And, uh, and uh, Windows, Windows uh, Server will send the um, HTTP request to us. Now we will export this SSF vulnerability. That's the Windows Server send the HTTP request to M package, which will which it has modified by us. When the IAM package receives the HTTP request, it will relay the NTLM hash to the SMB servers. And we start the mass route and the game mass shell. We can find that. Uh, the, this Windows Server has uh, installed the Microsoft patch. So, this kind of uh, text things that uh, we notice generally, but uh, affects all JDK version. If we can receive an HTTP request from Java, then we can give the remote command execution. <coughs> to complete this attack, an SSF vulnerability is required. So there are many restrictions. Next, let's discuss a new error in NTLM refreshing attack to solve this problem. Let's take Java as an example. Java based class URL connection can send the NTLM hash at multiple. That means almost Java application are fetched to expand the impact. In, ad in addition to SSF, we can use, use other vulnerability to send the HTTP request to us, such as XSE or Java Desire Realization. And since which will send the HTTP request to us is affected. We just mentioned Java Desire, Desire Realization in the history of Java security, we have to talk about some attack scene about Java desirealization. In 2015 year, some guy introduced their vulnerability to Java desirealization, exploiting their vulnerability and gave the RC effect which is the most uh, crucial vulnerability in Java history. It uh, affects the most of the Java application. And uh, the goal of most uh, these uh, Java get gauge is to call the command execution function to achieve the effect of RCE and most of the um, mitigation method uh, to verify whether there is a high risk object in process. The mainstream way is to set a blacklist or update Java security manager rules to prohibit desired uh, 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 high risk Java object. However, almost uh, no restriction on HTTP request. And we just need a um, get gauge that can send an HTTP request to us. It's uh, so easy to find uh, such a get gauge. Combine the, combine the 
with NTLM refreshing attack, we can bypass all current blacklist and achieve the impact of RCE. And uh, after a few weeks later, we will release a tool to generate Java Galaxy for NTLM refreshing attack. So finally, let's make a summary. Perform NTLM refreshing attack requires request an um, HTTP request sent to us. We have too many ways to trigger an HTTP request to us. For example, when, when the attacker, for example, uh, SSF, XSE, or sandbox, cloud servers, anything will send an HTTP request to us is the effect. And uh, when the attacker receives this request, he can relate to HTTP, SMB, LDAP, not only SMB. And finally, lead to remote command execution. I think it will be a new method to perform TLM refreshing attack. Combined with this high risk vulnerability that we found, it is easy to game RCE. Okay, finally, uh, we'd like to thank uh, OPCDE for giving us an opportunity to share our research. Thanks to Secure the S Corp, Spider Labs, Fox Globe, Dark Attack for these useful tools, and uh, that's all. Thanks for your attention. <laughs>